Meanwhile, 10 detained U.S. sailors were, uh, whose vessels drifted into Iranian territory, perhaps, have now been released. But the Iranian government now using footage of the incident as propaganda. Look at this, including this video showing our sailors, uh, our sailors on deck and one apologizing. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. I didn't have a special problem. We had no problem, sir. And after those sailors were released, Secretary of State John Kerry thanked the Iranian leaders. I also want to thank the Iranian authorities for their cooperation and quick response. I think we can all imagine how a similar situation might have played out three or four years ago. And, and in fact, uh, it is clear that today uh, this kind of issue was able to be peacefully resolved and efficiently resolved. All right, here now to discuss this is State Department spokesperson and uh, former Admiral, uh, retired Admiral John Kirby. Uh, and welcome back, uh, Admiral. Great to have you here. Thanks. Good to be with you. So we, we watched John Kerry make his statement, and what he said was, you know, how great it is, everything's diffused. And then this video comes up with our guys yeah. sitting in prone positions with their hands on their head, then in a, t a detention cell with a female uh, sailor with a kerchief on her head and an apology on camera. Would the Secretary of State had made that statement had he known about the video and the, state and, and the apology? I think so, yeah, Brian, because he was thanking the Iranian authorities for the release, for the diplomatic process that led to their release. And we have to remember, we got these guys back within 24 hours of, uh, of them falling into Iranian hands. That's not insignificant. He was, thanking, he was thanking the foreign ministry and the people that he worked with to get those guys out of there uh, and get our boats are back. You please, uh, Admiral, are you pleased the way our guys were treated? And we don't even have confirmation on what happened yet. That's right. And you're exactly right. We don't have full confirmation on exactly what happened, what led those sailors into those waters, and what happened there. We also don't have a complete picture of the initial moments of where they met with the uh, Iranian Navy. These are the IRGC Navy, not the Iranian State Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I, I, I've sailed up there in those waters myself. That was a longer time ago, of course. It's tense. It was tense then. Uh, it's tense now. Uh, and one, one of the things I've learned uh, through the, my 30 years in the Navy, actually two lessons. One is first reports are always wrong. you got to give it some time. They're going to debrief these sailors. They're going to figure out what happened. And number two, uh, there's always two or three different sides to every particular story. So we need to let the investigators in the Navy do the inquiry and figure out what happened here uh, and before we jump to conclusions. But what we're happy about here at the State Department is that we were able to get these guys back, you know, again, within 24 hours. How valuable do you think this video is, though? I mean, uh, we just had Judge Andrew Napolitano on the program earlier. He says they clearly violated the Geneva Convention with, with their actions here, and it's just Iran once again playing by their own rules. How damaging is this? They're saying this is a propaganda coup for them. Well, we have to, you know, we have to let the investigators take a look at this video. I have no reason to doubt the authenticity of the images. Uh, we're going to have to let the investigators take a look at that and, and work their way through that. I think it's important to remember, though, it, it, that the Geneva Convention only applies in time of war, and we're not sure. at war with Iran. I'm not making excuses for any behavior. Don't get me wrong. But I think we just need to let the investigators do their job. Yeah, what about the apology? Is that guy going to get in trouble? Well, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's difficult to know I I exactly uh, under what conditions he, he made that statement. Again, we, we, they're being debriefed right now. Uh, we need to let him right. speak for himself. He, was the, he and his crew, they were the only guys that were there. They only, they're the only ones that know, you know what kind right. of pressure they were under or not. So before we jump to conclusions about his apology or his statements, I think we need to let right. people you know, talk to him and work their way through Admiral, it. I just wonder if your Secretary of State should have waited, too, because he got more facts coming out that made him look as if there was no reason to be high five verbally for example right. saying there was no apology here's the vice president uh, yesterday before this video emerged no, there's no apology. There's nothing to apologize for. When, when, you, when you have a problem with the boat, you apologize the boat had a problem? No. There, and there was no looking for any apology. Okay. I mean, this was just standard nautical practice. The vice president was flat out wrong. Is someone not briefing him, or were you all surprised about what emerged after these conversations took place? Initial reports, and these are, as I said in rule number one, initial reports are almost always wrong, but the initial indications that we had was there might have been a problem with one of the boats, a, a, a technical or, 
or mechanical malfunction. You heard the Pentagon talk about that in the initial hours. That was the initial reports. That's the and, and information changes over time. And there was no U.S. government apology from the government level. I mean, I tweeted it out myself because a lot of the press coverage had it that that Secretary Kerry had apologized to Foreign Minister Zarif, and I just knew for a fact that that wasn't true. So we wanted to clear that up. But I was very careful, and we've been careful. We didn't know exactly what the sailors had said, uh, and sure. so we were kind of waiting to see how that played out. Mr. Kirby, uh, you say diplomacy worked, and this was a success it story. Yeah. That's your point of view. Let's go across the ocean. The head of Iran's armed forces said this. This incident in the Persian Gulf, which probably will not be the American forces' last mistake in the region, should be a lesson to troublemakers in the U.S. Congress. What do you say to that? Well, look, I'm not going to comment on every little com uh, every uh, piece well, of rhetoric coming out of Iran. Success. It doesn't sound it, like a success from his point of view. Well, it might not, and he can speak for his own views. What I can do is speak for the State Department, for Secretary Kerry, uh, and if it wasn't for the dialogue and the relationship that right. he has now with Foreign Minister Zarif, built up over many, many months, there's no way that we would have gotten but, those sailors but, out, but and I Admiral, think that's important to remember. But what about the relationship that allows the Iranian Navy to take our guys, perhaps when they were doing nothing wrong, that called the USS Harry Truman at gunpoint, at gunpoint right. that put them on their knees with their hands over their heads? So why why is this something that we should be celebrated and lauded? This says you are as an admiral. This is a position you grew right. up in in, uh, in the military. That's right. You cannot That's right. be pleased by this. I am, I am not turning a blind eye, and nobody is, to Iran's provocative behavior in the region. You mentioned the rocket uh, launches near the Harry S. Truman. Believe me, that got everybody's attention, uh, and, and we're certainly not condoning that behavior. And we have tools at our disposal through sanctions, and we have a robust military presence uh, to deal with Iran's provocative behavior. Nobody is turning a blind look eye so to what the regime Admiral, is capable of. The State Department is making America look weak and meek, and that is the message through the Middle East where you spend the most of you most of your career look I can tell you that we have a robust military presence in the area nobody's turning a blind eye to Iran no it isn't about a trust relationship with Iran we're mindful of what Iran is capable of that's why we're so engaged in the Middle East that's why we're trying to work through diplomacy to solve some of these problems it's complicated there's but no doubt about giving that. them 150 billion dollars this weekend despite this provocative behavior why are you rewarding this behavior Nobody's giving them $150 billion. This is about sanctions relief tied to the Iran nuclear deal. And you've got to remember, Brian, that that sanctions relief is tied to them cutting off all the pathways to their nuclear weapons capability. And an Iran without a nuclear weapons capability, I think even you would agree, is safer and better for the region I, than an just, Iran that has those weapons. Fundamentally, we just and, don't believe that they're doing that. And this deal is about cutting off that pathway. It is not about turning away from Iran's other provocative behavior. We have unilateral sanctions, U U.S. sanctions in place okay. to deal with their ballistic missile program, their support for terrorism. Believe me, we're going to keep the pressure on Iran. All right. Uh, John Kirby, spokesperson for the State Department. John, thank you very much for joining us live. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys.